Hey everyone, it's Erin from Erin Bun Paints. Welcome back to another acrylic painting tutorial. Today I'll be teaching you step by step how to recreate the beautiful painting beside me. It's called Night at the Lake. The supplies I use today include five different paint colors. We have red, yellow, phthalo blue, black, and white. And the brushes I use are my usual three. We have the large flat brush, we have the medium round brush, and we have the small round brush. As usual, the footage from this tutorial was taken from a recent Facebook Live event. If you want to tune in live to my next tutorial to give you an opportunity to ask questions while you're painting and to interact with the other viewers who are painting along with me, you can give me a follow at facebook.com slash Paints. Other places to find me include Instagram. You can follow me at instagram.com slash Paints, And you can almost always find me on Twitch. I'm streaming four to five times a week on Twitch right now, creating some personal art and designing upcoming tutorial paintings. So come hang out and chat, twitch.tv slash Paints. All right, let's get into it. Enjoy the tutorial. All right, so back to the painting, guys. We're gonna start with a nice purple. So we're starting with some blue. I'm using phthalo blue. If you have a different blue, that's totally fine. And then I'm grabbing some red from my never-ending bottle of red, which still isn't uh, somehow empty from paint. <laughs> red and blue. So large flat brush, we're mixing red and blue together on the plate. Welcome to Volcano Plate. For those who haven't seen before, this is my five-year-old plate full of paint. So what happens when you use the same plate over and over again for five years. Stephanie, I would love to join you today, Erin, but we're plumbing. Yay. I'm glad you're in a good mindset about plumbing. No worries, though. Uh, join me on YouTube later. It's no worries. Okay, yeah, it's going to be too tough to deal with that every time. All right, so I'm grabbing purple. Finally, we've put some paint on the canvas. Look at us go. Uh, we're doing just kind of the top area here. I would say it's about a hand worth. You see how there's about five fingers there. I don't really use measurements, inches, centimeters. I don't want anyone caught up in that. So uh, just finger lengths. I'm just doing a nice big band across here. <laughs> oh my, yes. A little, a little, a little, a little. I feel like I've heard that one in three different uh, forms though, but you know, again, your choice. <laughs> Welcome to the stream anyway. Nice to see you, not see Morton. <laughs> All barbs are welcome. Thanks, Rally. Yeah. Those are my family dogs, the two of them. The one has since passed, but the other one celebrated his 14th birthday this week. This one here, he's 14 now. We're so proud of him. <laughs> proud of our dog just chugging along there. Still a happy little pup. So purple everybody, I'm using that large flat brush. You can see what I'm doing, just going back and forth, kind of left and right across the canvas. And again, I called that like a, a hand, hands worth five fingers. Nothing fancy here. You can even that out by brushing back and forth, left and right like this. See how it kind of smooths everything out. For me yep and then what you can do also is if you want to paint the edges uh, you can just kind of carry the purple paint around the side here along the top along the other side and you can continue to do that with each color you're using as well so kind of keep that in mind if you want a fully completed canvas look there yeah give him Doug big cuddles for me I gave him many cuddles I gave him all the cuddles I don't see him too often because it's the family dog lives with my parents but I call them every moment I could. He's a good boy. He went swimming. My gosh, yeah, 14 year old pup. <laughs> what Groke said, yeah. Many cuddles and boops. Anita, hello. So nice to see you watching now. Yeah, nice to see you too. I missed everybody again. The break was so good. Thanks again for everyone for asking and encouraging me, but I really missed this. So I'm really happy to be back, honestly. Gonna give one quick minute for the purple and then we'll move on to the next step. Is this dark purple for the sky? Yes, Celine. So it's a nice dark purple to begin with. Here's the reference again. I probably brought it a little further down, but we can blend it and kind of bring it back up again. But yes, it's a nice dark purple at the top. The 
Yeah, we've never had a lab live longer than 12. So 14 was like a huge shock for us. We're like, are you kidding? <laughs> Still chugging along. Little cutie. Big dog person, big dog person right here. Yep, yep. Only thing was it was a little bit hot this week, right? Or last week, rather. So he was a little hot, panting a lot, but he was good. Had his little swims. Kept him nice and cool. It was all good. All right, so next step, everybody, I'm going to be using just a plain blue and bring that down a little bit. So see how it's a little darker here? That's just plain blue. And then what I'll do is I'll transition you to more of a medium blue. So what you can do is keep using that large flat brush. You can wash it off in your water whenever you're ready. Just so there's no more purple on it. It doesn't need to be completely clean, just like a little cleaner than it was. I'm gonna grab some blue. I'm gonna do probably about the same amount. So another like five fingers ish. And I like to sweep that across left and right. You can see I'm starting on the bottom edge here and I'm gonna work my way up. That's kind of how I do things. I like to put the paint on first and then I'll blend it. So again, that's why I'm starting on the bottom. That kind of ensures that I have a nice clean blue to start. And then by the time I start blending, I'll have most of the blue on and then it won't matter as much if my brush picks up the purple, you know? But again, sweeping back and forth just to even it out. And I wanna blend those two together. So I'm giving a quick half minute and then I'll teach you how to blend. Speaking of doggies, I'm taking mine for a walk. Enjoy, Groke. Doggy walks are the best. Andrea, so my red does not mix well. It's Artist Loft brand. Any tips? Oh, uh, can you tell me more about what you mean, Andrea? Is it like too thick or thin or is it the color? If it's a little thick and it's not mixing, you can use a little water on your brush. That would definitely help. Do you mean the color as well? I'm not sure if maybe you mean the color isn't mixing well. Let me know. Artist Loft though. I feel like that's more of a thin acrylic. Yeah, let me know more what you're talking about. So I'm gonna blend everybody. So blending is going to kind of merge these two sections together. So it's not a solid purple, solid blue. It's more of a transition. So just using my brush with no extra paint on it, but maybe there's some blue left over, as you can see. And I just wanna sweep in between the purple and blue. And my brush will kind of pick up both and move it around a little bit. You can see it helps kind of just smooth out that area there. We're kind of creating almost a new color. It's like a bluish purple and that just helps everything transition a little bit smoother. So back and forth in between the purple and blue and kind of moving it. You can see a little bit up, a little bit down while still stroking left and right. Blending. There we go. So again, it looks a little more like a smooth transition on the way down now. It's pretty thick and is always dark. Hmm. Yes, the color. It's always dark for purples or pinks. Hmm. I would say mine is pretty dark. It's actually a little lighter here than it is over here. So purple is kind of fun and, and a little tricky because it can have many different tones. So see how this one looks a little darker here? That's because I probably used a little more blue in there. The blue helps make it a little more like a violet. And then if you do more red, you can see it's a little bit brighter. It's kind of like just more of a warm tone purple. So Andrew, if you are looking for more of a light purple, because you're saying it's always dark, try using more red and see if it just changes the tone. Um, if you still don't like how dark it is, you can always add a little white to it and see how that works. But to be honest, we want it a little dark just because it's the top color of our sky. The whole point is to make it a little darker. If anything, I would prefer that mine has more blue in here to make it even darker, but teach their own. I do like this color purple anyway, so we're fine. Uh, but yeah, for purples or pinks. And pinks, you would add more white. Uh, the other thing I'll say too, is that depending on the brand and the tone of red, it might be a little different. So you might not get as bright of a purple if you're not using a specific red. So the red I use, just if you want to know, is bright red, bright red from uh, Start Academic Acrylic. And I find this turns out very nice and bright. You can see I have some really nice bright pinks. I got the nice bright purple. So try that if you're looking for a specific recommendation. You're welcome, Andrea, no problem. 
Okay, guys, I'm gonna go on to the next step. I don't know if my reactions are working again after that whole celebration. So um, try doing thumbs ups whenever you're ready to go. Otherwise, I'm going to uh, keep going at my own pace here. Yeah. It's called Brilliant Red. I would think that's close, Andrea, but when we go from different brands, sometimes they just change things up. I don't know, I can't find very much consistency from brand to brand, so it's kind of uh, learning what brands you like and then kind of learning within the brand what colors you like. Just experiment with maybe a couple different colors or speak to um, a store employee. I'm sure they can help lead you in the right direction there. So the next color I'm doing, everybody, is a nice medium blue. So as I said, we're transitioning from more of this darker blue into more of a medium blue to get that nice continued uh, transition all the way down. So now what I'm doing is I'm using my large flat brush. I'm grabbing blue, mixing with some white. I would say it's probably half half if you want to get technical, but just any like bright medium blue. See how compared to this, it's a little brighter. Thanks, Sharon. Yeah, I'm seeing, oh, they are, they are popping up. Okay, keep going with those thumbs if you want me to move on. Perfect. And I'm gonna be bringing this a little below halfway. You can see my horizon line is a little below half, so this trees are more so halfway. So you can make sure you're bringing it down if halfway is about here, I would say, just a little further. Just if you like the placement of my horizon line and where the trees are. Okay, so we're using lots of that medium blue. So again, just blue mixed with white, still using that large flat brush, throwing that on underneath as usual. I'm gonna work my way up and then blend. And yeah, you're welcome, Andrea, no problem. I know it's, it's, it's probably frustrating. I know it's frustrating when uh, you see me using red and you're like, why isn't my red the same? And it's just different brands and different slight tones. You can get more of a cool tone red or a warm tone red. I've heard a lot of people say, for example, uh, Aaron, when I mix my pink, it turns like salmon color. That's just because of the red. It's nothing you're doing wrong. It's just the tone that it is. And I would say salmon means that it's more warm toned, right? It probably has more warm kind of yellow undertones. It turns a little more salmon or peachy versus a nice true like bright pink is almost like blue undertones in a way. It's weird to think of it that way, but it is kind of cooler almost. So again, wiping back and forth, going up to my blue, and then brushing in between left and right, as usual to help blend them in. So that was just using that same brush. You can see I didn't even wash it off. And I'm just going back and forth in between that blue and medium blue. And that helps smooth it all out. Both colors should be wet for that, by the way, so that's why you saw me working a little quick, kind of rushing on my way up to get there, just to make sure my medium blue was still dry, or wet, excuse me, not still dry, we want it still wet. If it was dry, it wouldn't blend, so if you're having any issues with blending, it might be because the color is a little bit dry or sticky, in which case you can re-add the color and blend away again. Acrylic paint dries pretty fast, pretty fast. Give it another minute or two, just in case here. I will watch for thumbs now that I know that those are working, so feel free to pull those up if you need. Again, I'll keep, I'll keep trying to put this up because I know it's not displayed as well, so you can keep referencing what it's looking like. If your horizon line is a little slanty like mine, you don't need to worry about it. We can use the next color to uh, help with that. Saw one floating thumb. Another one. Couple more. Couple more. Awesome. Okay, oh, I'll keep this here just so I can talk about it here. All right, so next step, everybody, I'm gonna go into the water. So in the water, I chose to do this kind of purple-pink look just to really 
help everything kind of pop off a little bit more. So I started with more of a medium purple this time. You can see how this purple is a little lighter than this one, of course. This one's very, very dark. This one's more of a medium tone. So we'll be mixing purple with some white in order to achieve that, okay? And then I'll teach you how to blend down into a nice pink and eventually a nice light pink as well. Okay, so I'm gonna take my large flat brush and you should already have purple mixed because we were just using that. So if you do, you can just grab some white on your brush, put it on top of your purple and you can see it'll make more of a medium purple. It's probably a little light. If you need to remix, just as a reminder, it was red and blue to make purple. And you can add a little bit of white. And again, that will brighten up your purple to make it a little lighter. Priyanka, please wait. Oh, sorry, Priyanka. Here, I'll, uh, I'll do this step and then I'll give an extra couple minutes, okay? We'll see where everyone else is at too. This next step is a small, small area of purple, so you're probably fine. Okay, so more of a medium purple, I would call this. And I'm just going to use that to mark out the water line. So again, if you had a little bit of a shaky horizon line, you can now use the purple to help straighten that out. Mine is always wonky because I'm looking from the side. It's very hard for me to make straight lines from the side. It's always pointing down, apparently. And even if this isn't perfect, we will have an opportunity to add trees on top as well. And the trees can help even out the horizon line too. So if it's just a little too troublesome right now to make a straight horizon line, you can just leave it. As long as it's mostly straight, you'll be good. You can see I'm just using the purple to mark out my water line, my horizon line. And I'm not really bringing it much further. I'm kind of just leaving a strip on top. And I'll blend that into a pink eventually. So you can just use kind of either the width of your brush. If you have a large flat brush like me, I would say the width is about the size you want. So you can see just using the whole brush sweeping across. That's about a good size there. It actually looks the same tone. Should be a little lighter. So a neat thing about acrylic paint is you can alter it even when it's on the canvas. So if you're watching me closely there, I was saying to myself, mm, my purple looks a little dark. I'm just sweeping a little white on top to help lighten it up. You don't need to do that. That's not a step. I'm just letting you know that if you need to alter your color, you can always do that at any time. You could have done it with the blue, you can do it with any other color coming up. You can see it lightened it just a little more. So don't be afraid if you, uh, if you wanna change something on your canvas, it's good to try to change it while it's still wet. And you can just blend her in. Ooh, lots of thumbs, thanks guys. It's that purple from the top. So Celine, what I did is I used the purple from the top and mixed a little more white in it. So it just lightens it up a little bit more. I'm just giving an extra minute or two. Pink will be next. If you are done that step a little quick like me, you can wash off your brush in preparation. My purple is super vibrant. Ooh, I love vibrant purples. Lucky you. Got a thumb already. Perfect. You're welcome, Carol. No problem. Yeah, purple is my favorite color. Can you tell? There's like a purple chair behind. We have a purple, purple bedding. You saw the purple paint pour. <laughs> Love that purple. Sharon's ready to go. Excellent. I saw a thumb or two as a reaction. I'll just wait for a couple more. I know we had one or two requests to slow down a teeny bit just for now. You can keep going right after. Trisha, can you review colors one last time? Oh, no, I'm looking in the wrong spot. Never mind. <laughs> Sorry, that's a super old comment. I haven't caught up on this page here. There we go. I was gonna say, it's a little late to review colors. I'm happy to, though. <laughs> okay, I saw a couple more thumbs, couple more thumbs. Here they come. 
Okay, I'm gonna move right along here. So that was a nice, again, small step with a little extra time. Hopefully that was enough for some to catch up here. So I'm moving down into a nice bright pink now. You can see I have bright pink and then I leave light pink for the bottom here. So again, I recommend washing out your brush at this point. I'm still using the large flat brush. And I'm going to mix together red and white. Just taking a scoop of red, scoop of white, I would say about even amounts of each because we're going for more of a bright pink to begin with. If you need your pink to be brighter or, um, I don't want to say brighter, but just more, more of a hot pink, a little bit darker, just add more red to this. If you want it lighter, add more white to it. I'm going, you can see somewhere in the middle, I would say this is pretty bright, but also a little light, bright and light. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Guy Lane, super cool, thank you. Okay, and I would say I'm bringing this down to about there. You can see I kind of left just a small amount for my light pink. So I would say another four fingers or hand, maybe a little less. Anywhere around that point, just uh, leaving a little bit of a strip at the bottom for a nice light pink, that's the main goal. Once again, I'm going left and right back and forth. If you'd like to save paint, you do not need to go all the way across because we will be putting on our nice rock anyway. So even when I made this painting, what I did is I kind of just loosely, you know, marked out where my rock is probably going to be. And then I just made sure to cover pink all to the right of that. You don't need to worry about covering this all nice and thick. Okay. So again, in the name of saving paint, that's what I'm going to do. There's no harm if you want to bring it all the way across just to be kind of safe, I guess. But otherwise you can see, I'm just going to roughly bring it around to where my rock is going to begin so that that way I can overlap the rock on top and not have any gaps. So same as usual, I'm just continuing to grab paint, stroking left and right. Going up to the purple. And once I've reached the purple, I wanna blend that in. So just using any remaining pink or grabbing a little more pink if you need and brushing in between the purple and pink. You should get a nice soft transition in between the two. They play nicely together. So no muddiness will happen. It'll just kind of blend together, creating a nice soft edge. Use a little more pressure too if maybe things aren't blending. I find sometimes I really need to press down hard on the bristles to really encourage the bristles to pick up the paint and move it around. And you can see a nice fade is happening now. That's what we want. Okay, I'll give you some time for that. So if I can give, yeah, one piece of advice about where you're putting your pink, better safe than sorry. So if you're kind of like, Ooh, I don't know if my rock will reach that far. Keep bringing the pink over, bring it a little further over than you think you need. Cause it's way easier to just overlap with the black. And then that way you don't have any gaps. So do that. If you're a little nervous, again, there's no harm as well for doing the whole canvas. If you're not, not sure at all where your rock is going to go, if you're like, maybe it'll keep it nice and tight to the side, for example, just bring the pink all the way over. But I like to save that paint. Mm. Bernadine. Hey, Aaron, we're painting this tonight. If it's available, excellent. It should be Bernadine. I don't want to make promises because sometimes it takes a while to upload. Sometimes it uploads and that's like processing and it takes three hours to process. I don't know what YouTube's about with that, but I would say, um, it'd be safe to say it would be up like later tonight. Just maybe not like by seven, for example. This will end by about 6, 6.30. I'll film an intro. Yeah, it'll be later tonight. So yeah, hopefully it's in time for your painting session. If not, it'll be up as soon as possible. Kim, oh my, it's so pretty. Thanks, Kim. Yeah, I really like this one. <laughs> Looks great so far. Thanks, Bernadine. And you know what? Actually, I'm lying, Bernadine. Like it, it stays on Facebook before I put it on YouTube anyway. So it'll be ready immediately after YouTube or Facebook is done. 
It's just like posting to YouTube might take a little longer. So you you should, yeah, go ahead with your plans. Yes. <laughs> I'm not even thinking. Yeah, it's on face. I, what I do is I don't delete it from Facebook until it's available on YouTube. So it will be one of the two places. I like to try my best to get it on YouTube quick, but point is it's there. So continue with your plans. Yes. All right, I'm getting ready for the next step here, guys. I'm not washing off my brush. I'm using the same one. And what I'm doing on my plate is grabbing more white, mixing on top of my pink, creates a nice light pink. I'm throwing that on the very bottom here. You can see just covering up that last little bit. And as I bring it up, I'm blending it into the pink above it so it's more of a smooth transition. And then look at that, we have a nice fade all the way down. So same thing, I started by brushing below to get some nice clean light pink, and then I brushed back and forth while moving up the canvas. That helped blend it into the wet medium to hot pink, and that way it's a nice smooth transition. So that's the base done. That's the base of the water done. We still have a little bit of work on the water, but that's the base. So once again, I'll give a minute or two or until I see a lot of thumbs. Hope to do this one later, Jean from Milton, Ontario. No worries, Jean. So yeah, that's a good point. I keep saying, oh, I don't know when it'll be on YouTube. It'll always be on Facebook until it's on YouTube. So if you go to the YouTube page, you don't see it. Go back to Facebook and find it. It'll be just in the video section. Lots of little hearts thrown there. Excellent. Hope that means you're liking your paintings. Just give another minute or two. All right, well, I'm glad you guys liked the Eiffel Tower. Again, uh, what I'll be doing is I'll be posting that as a Facebook event so that you can plan ahead, but it'll be Friday at 8 p.m., just so you know. So you can plan ahead for that one if you want to attend that one. Lots of thumbs coming up, excellent. I think we're all caught up here. Let's bring this forward. Let's have a look at what we've got. Ta-da! Okay, I'm at the bottom of my canvas. Oh no, oh, you should be at the bottom, you're good. I'm at the bottom of mine too. Unless you mean for a different color, Katie, but uh, yeah, I've reached the bottom. We have filled up top to bottom. The only thing we're missing again is this, just for the sake of saving paint. You can see I'll be overlapping black anyway, so we don't need that covered, you know, just if you want. Okay. Kathy, you just got in. Someone told me about your tutorial. Yay, thank them for me. <laughs> I'm so glad. <laughs> Thanks, Kathy. Check out all my past ones on YouTube if you're curious, but otherwise I'm hosting these a couple times a week, so I'll see you on another one. And right now, too, if you want to hang out. All right. So here we go, guys. So let's do, let's do the stars next. Yeah, let's do some stars. All right. So the stars, everybody. We're going to be doing two kinds of stars. We get the manual kind of like bright big stars, and then we're gonna do some messy stars as well. I thought this is a really good galactic type painting, especially camping, you wanna see some nice shooting stars and galaxies, so I did do a little bit of splattering as well, okay? So you can do one type of star, you can do both kinds of stars, your own types of stars, whatever, but I'll lead you through the kinds of stars that I did, I made. <laughs> what a sentence, nice try, Erin. All right, so I'm doing this nice, uh, using this nice small round brush, this nice detail brush. So I've switched brushes at this point, finally. Been using that large flat brush for a while there. <laughs> okay, and I'm gonna dip into some white paint. I'm doing a nice big blob of white on my brush there. There it is. She might be in here, thank you. Thanks to whoever led Kathy to me, yay! And I'm going to start just by dotting on some stars. I'm going to point out one thing first. 
Uh, I would choose where you want your moon to go. If you want a crescent moon, it's key to leave the middle open because this isn't an open area where you'd see stars. It's actually the rest of the moon that's just hidden and shaded, right? So if you want your moon to be over here, maybe just leave a little bit of a blank space. Otherwise you can dot your stars really wherever you want. I would say I stick mine closer to the top where it's a little darker in the sky. So we see some nice bright stars kind of twinkling around. But all I'm doing is again, grabbing white paint on my detail brush and just tapping the tip like this. And that creates some nice little round dots. Many of you know a little hack with your brushes where you maybe use the wooden end or plastic end, just other end of the brush. You can do that. You can do a little dip, do a dab, and that creates a nice little round star as well. So try that if you don't like the bristles, if maybe the bristles aren't giving you, giving you any uh, nice clean round stars. The other end of the brush will help with that for sure. So again, you can see I'm sticking mostly near the top. I do kind of sprinkle them down a little bit. But I especially like having the bright ones at the top. Again, I'm going to try my best to leave a little bit of a blank space kind of in there, just for my moon. And then uh, when I do the splattery stars, the messy stars, I'm sure some will sprinkle a little further down, which is totally fine. I just think the bright ones, they're best a little bit higher up, right? Where it's a little darker in the sky. So I'll save that bottom space for some messy stars. I'm just continuing to dip, continuing to dab. Oh, I said I was going to leave that blank. Look at that. <laughs> Whoops. Ew. I just spit all over my painting. There we go. Just got rid of it there. I'll use some water. If you catch the paint when it's still wet, you can kind of like just rub it away. You could even throw some purple on there if you think it's a little messy. So I might do that later. Once I put my moon on, I can just put a little more purple in the middle to make sure it's nice and uh, shaded. Is this acrylic? It is, Kathy. Yes. I try and stick to about five colors of acrylic paint just so everyone can follow along. I do red, yellow, phthalo blue, black, and white. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll give a quick minute for those still dotting on stars and then we'll get messy if you want. Caution, caution, it will be messy. Messy is okay. I agree, Barb. I love the messy star look. I'm just talking if like people are working on a beautiful rug that they would be heartbroken to see have paint on it, then maybe you avoid this step. But I've got a nice drop cloth here. Hopefully it doesn't flick too far out this way onto chicken and my ornament here, but it's the risk I'm willing to take. The name of art. Okay guys, let's uh, yeah, let's go ahead here. So I'm gonna switch brushes again. I'm switching to the medium round brush for this one. And in order to get some messy stars, what I wanna do is I wanna dip into my water. So I have a nice wet brush and I wanna try and create a little pool of wet, watery white. Say that five times fast. Wet, watery, white, wet, watery, white. So I'm trying to, again, just dip my brush in the water and I kind of just, uh, rub it around in the white so that some water comes out of the bristles and it creates a liquidy white I would show you, but it might tip over. So I want a very liquidy white paint. And I'm trying to kind of collect that on my brush as well, just by tapping in there. And then in order to do the messiness, what we want to do is flick this watery white paint onto the canvas. So I'm going to use, I like to use my index finger for this. So I kind of hold my brush up and down. I'll use my index finger to pull back and then I'll quickly release the bristles and they'll kind of flick. So here I go. Not a lot is coming off. I'm going to liquefy a little bit more. It's kind of playing around a little with the consistency of the paint until you find the right one. Again, be careful because it's going to drip down. It might fly across. 
I try and go nice and close to the canvas to prevent messiness, but it's always possible it's going to be a bit messy. So just be aware of that. Don't send me the carpet bill when your carpet has some paint on it. Okay. Once again, if you want to try and avoid where your moon is, just so there's no stars showing up, you can. Otherwise, you can accept your fate and just decide that you're going to uh, grab some purple and blue later to help uh, create that space again. That's what I'm going to do. I think it's going to be too hard to keep it completely blank. But I'm just continuing to grab my brush, rub in the kind of wet white paint, flick onto the canvas here. And that's going to get us a nice galaxy. See that too? We get some like strings of stars. I love those. Some people don't really like those, how kind of uh, bunched up they are. I think they're great though. It kind of makes it look a little more galactic, like there's a big string of stars here and there. If you don't like anything though, again, you can grab blue, you can grab purple and just go over top when this is dry and that'll erase any stars that you don't want. You can pick and choose which ones to erase or just try again, whatever you want. I'm going to do a little more. Oh, that was a big splatter. That's good. I could really do this all day. Personally, I love this look. Love it. I'll give you a nice close up so you can see what's going on. Oh boy. Love it. Love it. Uh, you might get a little bit of a sprinkling down here. You can see maybe along the horizon line. I'm not worried about that because trees will go on top. If you see any in your water, you can kind of wipe them away. We're still going to work in the water a little bit, so you might find they get covered up anyway. We'll be adding some purple in the water, so you might find that it gets covered up. You don't need to worry too, too much. Charlene Windy out here. Uh, not really windy here yet. Maybe it'll come up to me, though. Come up to us. Hmm. Maybe a storm's brewing. Ooh, there are a lot of good storms this week. I love my thunderstorms. Diane, thank you for sharing your amazing talent with us. You're welcome, Diane. Thank you for coming. <laughs> thank you for the compliment. <laughs> Appreciate it a lot. Leah, some of mine look uh, like constellations. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's kind of what I mean. You can get constellations. You can get strings of galaxies. You can even purposely make a constellation if you want. You can dot on some stars in any order or layout you want. Love that. Jennifer watching from Waterloo. Yeah, it's not too windy here, eh, Jennifer? It's like, yeah, it's just kind of gray. Gray. Nishan, I went overboard with my stars. No, you didn't. It's impossible. You can't go overboard with the stars. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> I disagree. <laughs> I think you can always do more. I, I'm sure it looks great, Nishan. Kathy, thanks so much. We'll try and get the next one. Of course, yeah. Uh, Kathy, I'll be posting my next tutorial sometime maybe today or tomorrow. It'll be for Friday, though, so you have lots of time to plan ahead. Just keep checking out the Facebook page. It's kind of my main hub of communication, so you'll see it all here. Dun, dun, Galaxia de Pizza Halana. Hello. I know this is random, but does anyone here know this family? It can be cultural. Yeah, I have a question about that because I'm trying to figure something out. Ask the chat, ask the chat. I'm doing a tutorial here, Galaxia. Uh, so I can't really talk a whole lot in terms of like concentrating on a subject matter, but yeah, chat, if you wanna help her out on Twitch there, go ahead. Any quick questions, Galaxia, let me know. I can definitely chat with you. Charlene is outside painting with Marianne. Oh, so you're like, oh no, it's getting windy, oh no. No wind at all, Kathy's ready. Okay. I'll give another minute or two. I don't see too many thumbs so far. And I know this is a messy step, so maybe some of you are just kind of like cleaning off fingers and stuff. Fair. <laughs> Take your time. Vicky, so many stars. Yikes. I disagree. <laughs> you can never have too many. It's never a yikes. <laughs> Again, though, very easy. If you think you went overboard, just grab some medium blue or dark blue and kind of go on top. And you can either erase specific stars or just like cancel out a big bunch of them. Super easy. You can do that now, you can do it later, whatever you like. But I'm not kidding. I, I feel like you could do all the stars in the world. I still wouldn't say it's too many. You'd have to like have the whole top part white and be like, oops, too many. And I'd be like, yeah, maybe. Maybe if you don't see any purple or blue, then it's too many. But otherwise, I just go crazy with them. Lots of thumbs ups. Excellent. Let's move along here. So next step, everybody, I'm going to go down to the water. 
I just want to leave our background dry a little bit more before doing the moon and the shooting star. So I'm going to shift down and I'm going to do this nice purple in the water. So you can see how we have purple, almost like little ripples or waves, just to really show the water lines in here. So that's what I'm going to do is add my purple now just on top. I'll show you how. I've done this uh, similar look before on other tutorial paintings, so maybe you're comfortable with this. You can go right ahead, but otherwise I'll go nice and slow with everybody. So I'm going to use a medium round brush for this. You could use um, a large flat brush, you could use a small brush, anything like that is fine. But I'm using my medium round personally. I'm going to dip into my medium purple brush, or medium purple color, almost a medium purple brush my medium purple paint. So as a reminder, the medium purple is what we used for the top here, top of the water, I should say. And it was red, blue, and white mixed together to make it a little more medium toned. All right, so I'm gonna use just the tip of the brush here. And I'm just going to start to do some little shaky lines coming across anywhere within the purple and pink area. So again, I'll show you my reference. You can really see these go everywhere. They go all the way from the top of the water all the way to the bottom. They're all horizontal shaky lines. You can see how some of them are a little bit wavy, a little bit thicker or thinner. So don't worry about creating, you know, super thin horizontal lines or perfectly straight horizontal lines. As long as they're mostly going you know, horizontal across, that's good. And as long as you have some thick, some thin, that's good too. We don't need to worry if some get a little blotchier, a little thicker, it all adds. And I like to personally wipe the brush on the edge of my plate to help line up my bristles. I find that really helps me with this step, but I'm sure as long as you're using the tip of a brush and just with a small amount of pressure, you can get some nice thin lines and nice thick lines. Use a little more pressure on your brush if you want them thicker. Use less pressure to make them thinner. You can see I just kind of stack them all amongst one another. Just lots of little horizontal strokes. Who is that? Thank you for the follow, Galaxia. I'm gonna try and read your message in a minute after I get this done, just to uh, catch up with your chat there. Maybe I can give you a little bit of advice. Looks like Kaz is doing well though. Thank you, Kaz. So just continuing to grab my paint, kind of stroking left and right, filling in those little spots. Again, all in and amongst one another. You can see how they're all just kind of filling up the space a little bit at a time. Bonnie, some of my stars look kind of light, like they are too watered down. You could try flicking again, Bonnie, with a little bit of a thicker white paint. I do find sometimes that happens to me too. They kind of dry down a little bit transparent just because we used a nice watery white. But yeah, you can try flicking again. You can add more just bright stars if you want in amongst your flick stars. All of those tips will work. Tracy, love the flick of the brush. I love it too, I love it too. Marianne, how can I blend better? What are you uh, having issues with, Marianne? Is it just, if it's not blending, Usually my first guess is because one of the colors is a little bit dry. So in that case, you would re-add a little bit of the dry color. Usually it's the first color you applied, which is usually the top color. You can use that on your brush to reapply it right where you need to blend and then brush a little bit more in between. It's like you're adding a fresh coat of paint, right? It'll really allow it to do a nice wet on wet blend. Uh, using maybe a little more pressure I mentioned that earlier because sometimes I feel like some people think you need to have a soft hand with blending and it's actually the opposite in my opinion. I use a little extra pressure because it really helps the bristles pick up the paint on the canvas and blend it together. So try using a little more pressure. Those would be my couple tips. If you have any more specifics in terms of what's happening with your blending, let me know and I can try my best to continue to help. I order the brushes you recommend and I'm waiting for them to arrive. Ah, Jennifer, I'm excited for you. Just like anything, it'll take a little bit of practice just to get used to them, but I think you'll love them. They've, they've really held up for me over the years. I keep saying it. I feel really comfortable recommending them because they've really, they've seen their days, man. <laughs> used by, yeah, many people over a long period of time. So if they're still holding up, I think they're pretty good quality, personally.
And yeah, if you ordered that five pack that I recommended, you have a couple other brushes to mess around with too. So maybe you find that you like the medium flat brush, for example. Maybe you don't like the medium round, medium flat is better. Yeah, you have those options. There's a filbert in there. You can use a filbert brush here and there. One other thing I'll point out everybody, you can do some shorter horizontal lines. They don't all need to be kind of long and wavy. You can just kind of touch the tip of your brush and do small little horizontal lines. I find those really help with filling up space without making it too cluttered. So throw in a few of those if you want to break up some lines a little bit. Good. And you can see I'm covering any water area with this. So once again, being safe, even if I think some of this will be covered by rock, just being safe right now and just uh, getting all these little waves on. There we go. So that's how mine's looking. I'll leave this here for a minute or two as we catch up here. Celine wasn't paying attention what color. Oh, it's just the purple. So this purple here, use that all the way through all those little waves. Uh, what brushes do you use? I can link you if you want here. Jennifer, I'm looking forward to learning to use them. Yes, I heard the five pack, excellent. Yeah, I think you'll love them. Okay. Oh, Kaz and Galaxia, I'm glad you're talking. Oh, nice, yeah, nice suggestion, Kaz. With the uh, Reddit thread there, or Reddit, uh, subreddit. Hmm. Yeah, I honestly can't relate, Galaxia. That's a, it's a tough scenario. No, no, of course. No, it's not the chat at all. It's more so I feel bad. I can't really pay attention to you as much right now just because I'm doing a tutorial. I'm actually managing on Twitch and Facebook right now, so I've got some people watching and following along. But please, use the chat as you like. Yeah. Thank you, Galaxia, though. Oh, Barb. Um... I didn't change anything. I don't think I should be fuzzy, sorry. Oh, I'm okay now, excellent. Okay, <laughs> maybe it was just a quick little blip. Less of an ultra. Yeah, that's what it sounds like, I agree, Kaz. Yeah, I think that's, uh, I think Kaz has got it there. And reach out Galaxia too. Um, hang around. Maybe after the tutorial we can chat more. I'm not in that situation, but maybe we can talk more. Well, Kaz, you're so sweet. You're doing a good job. Maybe, yeah, maybe it just helps talking to people about it too. Yeah. <laughs> no, of course, yeah. Hang out if you want. Keep chatting with Kaz. Sounds like you can really a little bit, but I think that's a good idea. Those, uh, that Reddit, that subreddit, it would be a good idea. You'll get lots of opinions there too. That's always good. Maybe even just bringing up that it doesn't make you feel, uh, feel happy when they do that, you know? Something as simple as that, maybe just kind of stating. Anyway. Okay, what was I looking for? Those brushes. Princeton value set. I should really just have this uh, linked forever because I feel like I look it up every <laughs> every tutorial. I should just uh, keep a consistent link maybe on my page. Okay, that was here, correct? Yes, here. Patel asking there. Okay, I'm throwing the link in the Facebook chat there. Leah, I don't like the way my water looks. It doesn't fit in like yours. It's more prominent. Is it the purple on top that you're saying? You might want to lighten up your purple a little bit. You could try that if it's looking a little too like in your face. Uh, and you can either do that by going over top of any dark purples you have or just by using your pink and purple going right on top of everything, kind of starting fresh and then trying again. Lots of thumbs up. Sounds like you're ready. Yeah, try those things, Leah, if you're thinking it's more prominent. Yeah, you said it's more prominent, right? 
Andrea, what are you talking? Oh, um, I'm referring to some Twitch chats right now. Someone with a little bit of a family personal question, and uh, someone that we're chatting about, so that's nice. Yes. Yeah. So Leah, again, I think a lighter purple would do you better, or you can uh, you can either use the lighter purple right on top, or overlap with your pink and purple, start fresh, and then try again with the lighter purple. I think that's really the key there if it's a little more prominent. Okay, so I got you there. We had uh, some thumbs, so let's keep going here. So what we're doing next is we're doing the rocks. The rocks are a little bit of like a step-by-step -step, uh, layering process. So what I did for these rocks is I actually started with the color. So you can have a look at the color here. I have like a nice kind of slate gray, kind of blue gray, I would call it. And then I blend it down into a lighter blue gray. And what I do is I map that out with the rocks. I just kind of use that as my base layer. And then what I did is I put black on top to make it look very kind of like wavy and rocky. And I even added some highlights after. So it's gonna be kind of color by color here. So a little bit of layering, but it's lots of fun. Yeah, no worries, Andrea, and you're welcome, Leah. So I'm, uh, I'm gonna use my medium round brush. You could use the large flat if you prefer. Uh, I like this one though, just for the nice kind of rolling rocks, I would say. And I'm gonna start with more of this kind of medium bluish gray, and then we're gonna blend down into a light bluish gray, okay? So uh, medium round brush, make sure it's nice and clean. I think I need some black on my plate. And we're doing a blue gray. <laughs> Sorry, a blue gray. <laughs> We're gonna be mixing uh, blue into some black and white. So quite literally just gray and blue mixed together. I found gray was a little too dull and I didn't want it like a bright blue like our sky. So the blue gray is what I landed on for the kind of main color of our rocks. So you can do any order of colors here. It doesn't really matter. Maybe I'll do white and black for gray and then a nice big blob of blue in there. So it's not gonna be a plain gray. Again, I keep saying it's kind of like a blue gray. See that? So it's black, white, and blue. And you, no problem. Hello, thanks for coming in to say hi. You'll paint this later, excellent. Yes, it'll be available as usual. Hope you had a nice vacation, she says. Yes, thank you, I did. Just a nice little time away. Feels weird calling it a vacation because I really didn't go anywhere. Like I drove maybe a few hours north, but <laughs> it was a vacation in a sense of disconnecting. So yes, thank you. Okay, blue gray is on my brush. I'm going to use that to kind of mark out where my rocks are going. So I'm starting just below maybe the horizon line here doing a nice little wave with my brush as I come down, going down into the right. If you want a quick little look, I'll bring that up here. Just as we go along, make sure we're sticking to the reference if you want, or you can do your own thing. But yeah, I'm bringing it kind of all the way out into the water so you can see I'm really overlapping and that's totally fine. Again, that's good. That means I was playing it safe and I don't have any gaps to worry about now. Bring it out. I like to make a little point, so I'll bring it back in a little bit. And then I'll come right back out again. It looks like I come right down to that bottom right corner. So I'm using the same color all the way down for now. What I'll do is I'll just put on some white to lighten it up after. So I'm just going to quickly add my blue gray. Blue, go. blue, blue, there we go. I'm gonna keep adding my blue gray as I was in the middle of saying before I realized my blue paint was out. And I'm just gonna put that all in my rocks here. So again, I know I have that transition to the lighter blue gray, but I'll do a nice easy blend for that in a second. I'm just using the same consistent blue gray for now trying to anyway. Yeah, it's a little different just because I pre-mixed it, or I just recently mixed it. But adding that all in the rock here, and then we'll lighten it up with some white right after, just to get a transition. Mm, 
See that? So I've got the whole thing covered. I'll give you a quick minute and then I'll show you what I do to make it lighter on the bottom. Okay. So, just catching up on your Twitch comments, guys, but it sounds like you're having a good conversation, so that's great. <laughs> Kaz, you're right about Reddit. But I think, yeah, I think you'll get a nice variety of answers there. Some, some not so good, but some good. Mm -hmm. Yay! Uh, Kaz, oh, that's a good question. So, Kaz is asking on Twitch, kind of curious, do you draw this tutorial painting the same way you draw the original, or do you take liberties and the methods end up the same? I change it up a little bit. And the reason why is because when I'm creating the design, usually on Twitch, if you want to watch me how I create the design, I'm playing around with things at all times. I'm like moving things around. I decide to, you know, change certain aspects of the painting. So the order of things might be a little different the way I originally created it, but it's my goal to make it pretty much the exact same outcome. Yeah, good question. And it's just, it's, it's literally only because I'm like trying to, again, change things as I go. If I don't like something, I'll maybe do a different order of steps for sure, uh, but in the end it's like pretty similar order, pretty similar. For example, in this one I changed the tent color like three times, so <laughs> you know it won't be necessary for me to do the exact steps like that, but yeah, very similar. I do the same like base layer of white and then color on top type thing, yeah. So going on to the rocks guys, uh, to make sure we have that nice transition from dark to light, Instead of mixing a new color, I'm just gonna grab white on my brush and brush it right on top near the bottom. And you can see what happens is because our blue gray is still nice and wet, it just turns it into a nice light blue gray. So this is a great example of what I was talking about above. Remember I was like, oh, if you like a color, or excuse me, you don't like a color, you wanna change it, throw paint on top. This is exactly what I'm talking about. You can just put some paint on top blend it in nicely so by blending I just mean brushing on top so it kind of mixes in and we now have a transition it's just a different way to blend rather than doing two different colors and blending them together we now just have the one color and we're putting white on top and it makes it look like we did all that hard work of doing two different colors and blending and all that jazz so if you like this method you could really use this method for future blending you know Sometimes you're using different colors, so you can't really do that, but if it's in turn, if, if you're just trying to make something a little lighter on the way down, like the pink, for example, we could have done that. Just throw white on top, blend it on top, and look at that. We now have a transition from dark to light. Uh, and we don't really need this to be completely smooth because we will be adding black on top. So if you see any streaks here and there, or maybe some abrupt changes here and there, that'll be very much hidden when we put the black on top. Yeah. Aaron Tesla <laughs> tapping into the painting like he tapped into electricity. <laughs> That's a reach. <laughs> oh man. I have no Tesla, believe you me. <laughs> oh boy. Hi Amit, how's it going? So I'll give everyone a minute or two for that step there. I have AC in here guys, but I just shut it off because it's so loud against the microphone. So I'm always ending this in a, in a sweat. <laughs> Whew. I'll survive. All right, what are we doing next? And sometimes the order too, Kaz, I change just due to drying time. When I'm creating a painting on Twitch, it might be over a four hour period and I'm like, la la la, and I can really do any order I want because everything's drying in between, but when I'm doing a tutorial, I really need to think about the order of things, uh, making sure that things aren't going on top of wet backgrounds if they can't do that, and uh, <laughs> yeah, just keeping that in mind as I go. So that's why I'm switching up and down here and there when maybe when I created the painting, maybe I focused all on the top, all on the bottom, yeah. So small changes, but you see, they all come out pretty much the same. That's the t whole entire goal. I want to make sure we're painting the same painting that I displayed. 
don't want any false advertising here. You can go all day. I know. <laughs> I know you and many others can. So yeah, sometimes I even like think about just what step we need to do next as we go. So here's the comparison, guys. You can see the nice dark to light, dark to light. So we're going to be leaving the rocks to dry a little bit. We could theoretically put black right on top. It wouldn't affect it too much, but just for the sake of a little bit of a cleaner stroke, we'll go up here next. We'll do some trees next. If you're ready, you can start washing off your brush. I'm going to keep using the medium round brush. Kaz, is there any specific source of inspiration when you look at concepts for your paintings? Not really specific. Um, I'm bad at creating things without looking at something. I, have, I find it very hard to just cook up something in my head and then uh, put it on canvas. So usually what I do is I use color inspiration. So just like pretty photos that I see online, I'll save them in an album just to look at like color combos and stuff. And then I just look at nice subject matter as well. Uh, and I try and like smoosh those two things together and create my own original piece. I don't like the idea of looking at something directly and copying it directly. So what I do is I take um, just specific elements of certain photos or other things that I see online or things that people request as a big source of inspiration and I go from there. So medium round brush everybody. The next step is uh, the trees. So I'll show you that real quick again. We have a nice little landscape of trees here along the horizon line. I did some very typical Bob Ross pine trees. Okay, so they're a little smaller, but they're still kind of there, nice and shapely. All right. And I like to do some taller ones in the sides here, come down to the middle, and then go nice and tall on the other side as well. I off centered it a bit in case you want to follow along with what I did. In terms of uh, order of steps, though, just grabbing my medium round brush. What's going on? Medium round brush, black paint. So dipping into the black now, no mixing required. And I would say I started just by going right across the horizon line to really straighten out anything that may have been a little bit wobbly. So as I said before, if the purple was a little wobbly here and there, this is yet another chance to help kind of even it out, make it nice and straight across. Just cutting right across there, just a semi-thin line. It doesn't need to be the thinnest, but I just want to keep it a little thin so that I have room to kind of move my trees up and down or keep them low if I want. So go ahead and grab your black, go across like that. Amanda, oh my god, I'm just tuning in. I love how purple your office is. Thanks. It's always been purple, you just haven't seen it. <laughs> I moved some things around. The chair's always been there just off camera. The purple bedding has always been there just off camera. This allows a little more space for me, so you're seeing a little bit more of my office as a result. But yeah, I'm a purple freak. Love the purple. Charlene, where do you get your brushes and paint from again? I'll answer that in just a quick second, Charlene. I'm just gonna go ahead with the trees so we can get started on those. So again, if you wanna follow my layout, I had some taller trees and then shorter ones and then taller again. So a quick little review of how to do trees. I'm using the medium round brush, black paint, and I wiped the brush on the edge of my plate. It might be a little rounded, but mostly the bristles are lined up. I like to start with a nice trunk, straight up and down vertical line. And then when I wipe my brush here, I use it at a 45 degree angle, so not 90, not 0, 45. Using the tip of the brush, I'll try my best to show you as close as possible. I lightly tap the very tip, just along the top part of that vertical line, so it gets just a little bit of foliage or branches coming off. As I move down the trunk, I'm tapping a little harder. This is the splitty brush, sorry, I'm gonna switch brushes. I have a good brush and a bad brush. Tapping a little bit harder as I go down. And then as I get further down, I tap and move left and right. So I'm trying to make my branches a little wider each time. And that's a little tree. So because these are so small, you don't need to worry too much about how much you're filling them up or anything. I find just once kind of tapping and going down works fine. 
For those who have tuned into larger trees that I've done, I usually go back up and I kind of fill in the middle a bit. I don't find it super necessary to do that with these trees personally. Uh, but yeah, what I do is I just do like a few of these ones. And then what I'll do is I'll fill up the rest of the horizon line just with some small little sticks like this. So we're not worried about doing all of the trees like that. That would take a long time. But I'll be kind of filling up the rest just with some straight up and down lines like some little tree tops. These ones kind of just poke up a little bit higher so you can see some nice detailed trees. And they're in and amongst all those little vertical lines there. So here's another one. Tap, 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 tap. There we go. See how it kind of pokes up a little bit more. And I'll do a couple more little vertical lines. So I'm just flicking the tip of my brush up from the bottom here and you can see it just makes it look like there's little tree tops, you know, without doing all of that extra work. So you can choose. You can either do kind of your big trees first and then fill up or you can do what I'm doing, just going back and forth in between. Mm-hmm. So many purple fans. Sharon, I know. <laughs> Pink Freak, she says, yes. I'm sure you're loving the nice pink water we have going on, Sharon. But yeah, Amanda, Andrea, purple is the best. Groke, purple is awesome. <laughs> it's my favorite. I love it because it's so, it's different to so many people. They have the blue purples, the red purples, the lilacs. They're all beautiful. It's just a nice color too. So again, I'm kind of going down a little quicker here. I kind of off-centered my horizon line a little bit in terms of the height of the trees. So I'm just doing some tiny little flicks right around here and then I'll start to make them a little higher again and then start to raise up for the right-hand side. If anyone needs another close-up of a tree, let me know. I'm just gonna keep doing these just one at a time here so you can kind of look at what I'm doing. But if you need another close-up and some verbal instruction, just let me know. Oh, I missed your comment, Kaz, and he said it, Aaron said, let there be texture. I like that. <laughs> and then there was texture. <laughs> And yeah, I answered your question about inspiration. Yeah, I find I got a lot of inspiration from inspiration from the viewers. They always send me some lovely photos that they like. They, I have a whole big list, a huge page worth of just subject matter that they all gave me ideas for. They said, oh, we like animals. We want, you know, Paris. Again, Paris and Eiffel Tower was requested by a few people. So that's an inspiration. And usually what I do is I just Google, you know, Eiffel Tower and I have a look at how the Eiffel Tower looks and what's around it. And then I grab some colors that I want. Usually it's the blue, pink, purple because I'm obsessed with that color combo right now. Uh, I try and change it up though, promise. But yeah, you can see I stuck to blues and teals for the uh, Eiffel Tower. And it's just kind of like molding those two things together. Some colors, subject matter, overall layout design. And there you go. So that's my process, but everyone has different ones. And you, maybe you should add the link. Oh yeah, I didn't answer Charlene's question. Thank you. Because lots of people are asking. Yes, that's a good point. I think I should just put it in my description from now on or like in a pinned post on Facebook or something so that everyone knows where the brushes are from. But Charlene, the brushes, um, they are on Amazon. I didn't personally get them from Amazon, but I found the exact, exact uh, set of five that I personally bought. I bought them from kind of like a wholesaler because I had... Uh, a large number of packs that I needed for my old position. Um, but you can buy just one pack of five from Amazon. I think it was like 10 or 20 bucks for the five. I think it's pretty good value. And again, I can really attest to the fact that they last a long time. So Amazon is my answer for brushes. And then the paint I get from Curry's Art Store. It's a Canadian art store. Um, I think, I think across Canada, I could be wrong though. It might just even be only Ontario, but otherwise I know they do ship online. So I know you're not out of Ontario, but just in case anyone listening is, you can shop online, Curry's Art Store, and I believe they ship pretty, pretty far and wide as well. So <laughs> check those out. And the paint is the Start Academic Acrylic. It's just a nice value brand, nothing special about it. It's just good value, baby. That's <laughs> what I'm all about, that good value. It's 
like 18 bucks for this two liter jug. And if anyone has been into an art store and it has looked at kind of the small tubes of paint, you know what I mean by that's good value. Because sometimes tubes of paint, sometimes tubes of paint can go for like 10, 20 bucks just on their own. So to get a whole two liters of paint for 18, that's my kind of deal. And you can see I love the color payoff of them. I'd say academic acrylic means the paint is a little thinner, but I really don't mind it. I've learned, once again, it's kind of like learning to work with whatever you have. I've learned to work with it and I've learned to love it, so. Okay, and I'm just gonna fill up the rest of my little gaps with some quick little lines. So you can see this is an easy way to fill up gaps, just kind of flicking your brush up and down. Even if you have just one nice tree, Give it a friend, maybe have two, but even if you have one, you can fill up the rest of your horizon line just with these little flicks. It just makes it look like they're nice treetops. You see a few poking out. It kind of shows the viewer that there is some detail hidden in there, but you can also uh, just flick on some trees so you're not spending five hours adding every individual perfect tree in there. <laughs> but yeah, it is a good idea, Andrew. I think I'll be doing that. Yes, grow cappy little trees. It is a good price. Yeah, it's actually like the best value I've found for the color payoff. And everyone, you've, you've seen the comments, everyone's like, but your red is so pretty and bright. Like that's this one. It's the, it's the value brand red. So really, I don't think I'm missing out here. Are we taking a break with this painting cat? No, usually I don't take breaks. If you need to take a break, please feel free because this video is watchable later on if you need to like revisit it. But I try my best to kind of to do it all in one go. I find people have been liking that anyway. Cause I still go nice. I still go nice and slow step by step. So uh, yeah. Oh, there we go. There's a nice little close up. I'll do one more tree for you, Anne, and anyone else who needs another little instruction on trees. Some of those are a little messy. I'll throw a tree in there. Okay, ready? So I'm gonna start with a vertical line. Put one right here. I'm gonna bring this closer for you. So I made sure my brush is wiped on the edge of my plate. Going right at the tip top here. Again, I'm at a 45 degree angle. And I'm going to lightly tap the very tip along the top here. And you can see what happens is just small amounts of paint come off. It makes it look like the very top branches of a tree. As I get further down, I'm tapping harder. So using more pressure, that allows the bristles to kind of spread out more and create larger branches. And then I start to move my brush left and right as I come down and that brings some branches out further. That's a little tilty just cause I was <laughs> looking at the computer screen, but you get it and you can move some branches a little bit, make them a little longer if you need to adjust anything, make it taller if you need it thinner. That's a good trick too, by the way, if you feel like you started a little bit quick with your branches and they're looking a little thick up top, make it a little taller with a thin line, tap a tiny bit, and now you have a nice uh, shaped tree. It's no longer like top heavy. You can just add a little extra on the top with a nice thin line to make it a little more slender looking. There you go, Anne, I hope that helped. And then Charlene, need better brushes, Curry's have a website. Yeah, Curry's has a website. If you don't want to order on Amazon, Curry's, you can shop online and I believe they deliver at a pretty low shipping fee, even maybe free after a certain value is bought. So there you go. Check that out. And I would talk to the uh, Curry's employees for recommendations for sure. They're very knowledgeable in there. Okay, I'm going to give one more minute for trees, guys, then I'm going to go back down to the rocks. <laughs> oh, I'm close to turning on that AC. <laughs> Y-S, spelling wise, just in case you're Googling it. I'm sure it would correct you if you said Curry's Art Store with a K or did the I-E-S, but just so you know.
Oh, hello, Mystic. You're back. <laughs> uh. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm going to go on to the next step here. We want to keep rolling along here. We want to make sure we have the next step down uh, to allow this to dry before we do things like the tent and everything. So that's what we're going to move on to here. So we have our nice base down. We have our nice kind of blue gray gradient here. Now what we want to do is use the black to help kind of sculpt out the look of this rock here. So this rock, I really like this rock, by the way. I thought it was pretty cool when I designed it. Uh, but yeah, I was kind of inspired by local cottage country rocks. They're kind of all like very separated, nice and rolly. You know, they almost look very smooth and kind of layered. So that's what I tried to do here. I tried to take my black and do some little waves with the black so you can see some thick black areas. And then I kind of separated those little waves with smaller thin black lines to make it look like there's kind of cracks in the rocks to really make them nice and smooth looking. So I'll kind of show you as usual step by step what I do, but that's the overall look there. So I'm going to keep using my medium round brush, using my black paint, and I kind of start just by doing this top edge here. So you can see nice and thick, you do not need to be very thin with this step, you can just use the width of the brush pressing down nice and heavy there grabbing more paint as I go. Helps create some nice clean black lines. I just did a little outline to start. So I'm just going along the top, the right hand edge, and then all along the top edge down here. So I was saying before, you wanna keep reloading your brush because that'll help get you a nice clean edge. If you're really scraping off the last small amount of paint off your brush, you'll get more of a rough edge versus I like the nice clean black lines for this uh, this look here personally. So that's what I'm going for there. Azra, how long does it may take you to make the first painting, like the reference? So I've recently been doing them on Twitch and usually on Twitch I'm a little more chatty because I'm not doing a time step-by-step -step tutorial, right? Uh, so usually it actually takes me like three or four hours but nowhere amount of that time is needed really. If I were to do it fully concentrated, I could do it in under two hours for sure. Uh, but yeah, I'm chatting on Twitch. We're just like, you know, talking and doing other things as well. And then as I said, sometimes I change things up and that adds some time to the painting too. So I wasn't kidding. For this tent, I used three different colors. I had three different <laughs> ideas for a color of a tent and I landed on orange eventually. So for example, that took like a good half hour to hour just to keep stacking on the paint, letting it dry, trying a new color. So like three to four hours probably, yeah. But nowhere near amount that time is needed. All right, so once I do the black outline, then I can start to kind of just carve out some nice rolling rocks and layers. So you do not need to follow the exact lines I'm doing. I'm just kind of showing you the process here. Um, I like to start on the top. I kind of just carry lines coming down and over. So they all kind of come down a little bit, but I found the key as well was to make them a little horizontal. You won't really see many lines going straight down. They're all kind of just wavering down. They're kind of going over and just kind of slinking down as well. So here's a little edge I've brought down here. Maybe I'll bring this edge down a little. You can see you can end them with little tips if you want. You can end them abruptly. It really doesn't matter. It's kind of like a cool mosaic look. You can bring some in from the sides just on their own. Maybe keep some a little more flat. Maybe they meet up with other lines. Hmm. Lots of options here. Like you don't need to follow an exact pattern. Just kind of using my small tips here and there and just doing whatever layout you like. Uh, I'll bring another one out like this. Maybe it comes down a little bit more, kind of cuts off the side here. And I really like to make these thick too. You can see these initial ones. I even kind of go in and thicken up larger areas too. So maybe like where they're meeting, it's just nice and black there now. I really like the dark space in these. I'll show you again the reference so you can see really what I mean. Like, look at that. Lots of black there. It really helps break up certain areas. So rather than just small layers after small layers, we have kind of bigger layers going on. So don't be afraid to uh, use more black paint and use a little more pressure here and there. And you, bye Erin, see you next week. I'll see you then. You too, thanks for coming in to say hi. Rally, Erin, I'm gonna hit the sack. I have an early day tomorrow, it's half past 11. Oh, no worries, thank you so much for joining in, Rally. Good night, I'm glad you loved it. 
I'll be saving this one if you want to watch the VOD later too, because I was using copyright free music, so that's always nice. So yeah, start some, just coming out the side if you need to. Again, I'm going to try my best to get some nice large areas of black space here. Ooh, yes. I love this step when doing it in my painting because it was really, I wasn't following a specific guide here. I was just kind of just putting on wave after wave of black, right? Just kind of seeing how it all turns out. Bring it from the other side if you need to. I'm kind of just trying to generally split up these areas for now and then I'll split them up even further after. Can connect certain ones, like connect all the way to the side if you want. Again, bring it down to the left if you need. It's very mosaic looking to begin with. Mm. Maybe I'll bring that down further here. So yeah, nice thick lines to begin with. Look at that. We're on our way. Have a look at the reference if you need. So you can kind of see what I mean. There's some thicker ones and then we'll fill up with thinner ones as well. But yeah, fun questions. Today's guys, a lot of you are asking about my process and inspiration. It's lots of fun to answer those. I'm sure you're all curious too. I'm happy to share. And again, another plug for Twitch. If you want to see like how I create these things and inspiration, it's all on Twitch. That's what I do. I usually do that alone and it's been really fun to be able to do that with people. So you can watch me as I figure out the painting layout and spend four hours changing things around and all that fun stuff. So if that's what you're interested in. You can check me out. Okay, so I've got my thick black lines and now what I like to do is fill up with thinner black lines. So it's the exact same idea. We're just kind of wavering them kind of across like this as we go. And just making them a little thinner, maybe ending them a little bit quicker as well. So I'm not really going from side to side. They're kind of just breaking up these rock areas here. Maybe they split as they go, like kind of like tree branches almost, kind of like splitting away. So that's giving it more detail. So again, here's a reference you can see. Lots of little waves. And I like to, again, I like to kind of wave them, almost curve them, because it makes it look like some rolling rocks, right? They're all kind of nice and wavy. I like coming from the kind of point in. I think that's a nice look, just splitting up the point in a way. Again, very mosaic looking. It's very cool. I'm just working my way down. Again, combine them as you go. If some kind of like collide together, that's totally fine. But you can see once again, even though I am kind of wavering them, I, I mostly keep them horizontal. So that way it really looks like the rocks are kind of wavering up and down or maybe just coming down a little bit. I just found that to be a key. I didn't want any rocks kind of going up and down, right? There's a close up. I see here asked for a close up. Delaney painted live is fun, but I'm falling behind with it. My trusty pause button. No worries. I need to go get supper started. No problem. I'll finish painting later. Excellent. You're very welcome. Thanks for tuning in for the first little bit anyway. And hopefully it was fun just to do the first little bit and you can, like you said, use your trusty pause button. So there you go. And there's a close up view, yes, here of the rocks and Leah again as well. Do you want me to, I'll try my best to do some little wavies as I go. 
So you can see just kind of splitting back and forth, kind of going zigzagging almost, doing a couple small ones. Anything along those lines. Okay, don't hit it too hard. <laughs> don't cheat, says Endgamer. Try not to cheat. <laughs> What do you mean? Kaz, on that cheesy joke, I'm off to sleep too. Have fun with the rest of your stream. Thanks so much. Looking forward to that texture. Yeah. Texture mixtape. <laughs> Good night. Have a great night, Kaz. The art on your Instagram. Yeah, that's art on my Instagram. Yeah, I usually display my, uh, my tutorial paintings on Instagram. So endgamer95 if you're here for the first time i'm actually teaching a tutorial right now so i have people on twitch and on facebook following along with me so that's why i post on instagram so that i can show people what i'm teaching and then they can get their paint supplies ready and come along with me or just watch as i do it but yeah everyone's included if they want to so all the ones on my facebook or on my instagram excuse me have been taught before step by step They're all on YouTube for viewing, but otherwise I love doing these live events where people come in uh, paint with me live, so that's the idea. So that's what it's looking like, guys. Again, I have one more step for the rocks after we let the black dry a little bit, but for now that's basically the look we're going for here. Just all these nice splits in the rocks, nice and rolly, nice and rounded. If anyone needs more instruction, let me know. I think that was good, though. A lot of you said a little closer. I gave you some nice close-up views. Amazing. Thank you, Jarek. I appreciate it. That's the plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you're painting along or just watching Endgamer, but yeah, otherwise you can watch for future tutorials, too, and you can, like, be ready right when we start. Go step by step. But enjoy for the meantime, yeah. So I'll give another minute or two in case anyone's doing that black part of the rocks there. We're gonna move back up in the painting to do some sky elements after that. And we're gonna come back down. Uh, one request as well, guys, I've said this in other tutorials before, but try your best to make sure you're not leaving any big blobs of black, any big like gloopy blobs, uh, just for drying reasons. So you can go in with a small brush or your medium brush. If you see any big blobs of black, any big ridges, you can see I just kind of flatten them out a bit. I just kind of stroke them a little bit more and then that way they're nice and flat to the canvas and they're gonna dry way quicker. They'll dry in minutes versus like 10 minutes or 15 minutes. So just for the sake of when we add our tent, we don't want any black blobs hanging around. So give that a little check, especially just where your tent is going. Mine's going right here. So I'm just making sure there's no black paint hanging around. No blobs. How to say we're doing the moon next. And no, I thought I answered that earlier. Sorry, no longer. Nope. But yeah, we're doing this, the uh, moon and the shooting star next. Get your small brushes ready if you haven't. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Waterfall is your favorite? Ooh, yeah, a lot of people loved that waterfall. That was one I did a while ago. That's on YouTube if you want to follow along. But yeah, I really like that one. Nice rainbow waterfall. If anyone on Facebook attended that one, you know which one I'm talking about. Oh, which one? There's two waterfalls. There's like the Niagara one, and then there's the one with the nice kind of rainbow sky as well, with the trees. Both are nice. But yeah, Niagara Falls, beautiful. All right, guys, I'm gonna move up to the sky here. If you're ready to follow along, you can. 
I've got my nice tiny detail brush here and I've got white paint on it. And I'm going with a crescent moon. If you want to change up your moon, you totally can. You can do a full moon, half moon, no moon at all if you don't want, um, but I'm doing a crescent. So I think of it as a C shape with the small tips on the ends and a nice wide center. So that's really the key is what I do is just a nice C shape and then I widen out the center, keeping the tips a little thinner. So I do what I would call like a medium size one. If you want to make it bigger or smaller, you totally can as usual. So you're trying to make it nice and round because it's as if you're kind of sketching out part of a circle, right? So you want to, not very round, <laughs> you want to keep it nice and round like a circle would be. So that was tough, just not really looking from directly in front. I would recommend looking straight at your canvas. That will really help you get a nice round C shape, of course. I'm always taking a risk by going from the side here, but I'll try my best to even this out so I can really show you. You can see it's as if I'm creating a circle, right? I'm leaving this part empty and I'm creating a nice round circle all the way around. And then for the crescent moon shape, I'm using extra white paint kind of in the middle area. So that left hand edge of the moon, I'm kind of widening out as I go. And then trying my best to keep the tips just nice and thin, right? We want to keep them just nice and pointy and thin. I'm going to try and twist this so I can get a nice close up view here. And hopefully I'll show you in a little bit of a better crescent. Oh boy, this is quite the wobbly shape so far. I find crescent moons need a lot of attention and a lot of concentration looking straight at it. So I apologize if mine is a little bit shaky. Trying my best to salvage what I've got though. It's not going to be as clean as my original, but it's something. We'll get there. Better. There we go. So yeah, if you end up with a shaky start like you just saw me doing, I just kind of look, concentrate on the outside edge, trying to make it nice and round. And then the inside edge, you kind of alter just by, again, bring some paint out further in the middle, keeping it a little tipped at the ends. Yeah. Carol, when things, Aaron, when things go back to normal, will you do live events again under your own name? Like uh, in person, you're asking. I don't know, Carol. It's, it's a thought, but I don't know. I kind of like virtual a lot, honestly. And I think, uh, yeah, what we've made here is kind of a special thing. I don't know if uh, I'd want to split up my time doing in person. I kind of like uh, this idea we have going here, the idea that everyone can kind of do it together without needing to really come together and uh, a little more flexibility. I love the whole having it online for future viewing on YouTube. I think there's a lot of cool pluses here for everybody. Um, I'd consider it, but honestly, I, I'm really liking what, uh, what we have going now. So I think likely the answer is no, but anything can happen. And to be honest, I don't really know when that would be, Carol. Like, I, based on the way things are going, in my opinion, it's going to be a long time before I could host any sort of in-person events at all. Anybody, not just me, right? Matter of opinion, but that's what I think. So, yeah, possibly, though. <laughs> yeah, I really like what we have going here, though. And Gamer, the Niagara Waterfall. Yeah, that was, um, I think everybody really liked the Niagara one. Facebook will chime in, I'm sure. But yeah, Niagara one, I think, was one of the favorites for sure. And that was a guest suggestion. Someone was asking about inspiration earlier. That was because somebody said, I want a waterfall. I like the rainbow look and got it done. All right, I'm going to go on to our shooting star, everybody. We have our nice moon. I want to grab a shooting star and put it on here as well. Optional, of course, if you're not into the shooting star, you don't need to do it. Uh, but I like to start just by doing the star itself. So I'm using a small detail brush, white paint, wiping on the edge of my plate. And I'm doing kind of like a couple lines intersected through one another. So a nice twinkly star. Vertical, horizontal, two diagonals. 
kind of thing. All right. Do, 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 do. Just nice straight lines. Straight as possible. Again, nice and big and twinkly. This is a shooting star. It's going to be nice and big, of course. Hey, I'm a tree. Welcome. Thanks for stopping in. Oh, I love that little comfy emote. Hi. I wish I could be wrapped up in a little blanket right now, although it's super hot, so maybe not. Just for the comfy element, I would love that. <laughs> oh, Addison, sorry, I did answer that. No, the answer's no, not anymore. For the past, like, month or two now. Carol, I was just wondering. Yeah, of course, and love what you have to. Yeah, no worries, I can understand that's a question. I'll talk to him a little more in a second. I'm just gonna do the next step here, so white paint on my teeny tiny brush. And to make this a shooting star, I'm just going to drag a small amount of paint out. So if you have a large blob of paint, go ahead and wipe that on your towel a little bit. Just so there's only a small amount. And I just do a big arc kind of coming woo, way up to the left here. So it looks like it's shooting down. You can see what happened is just naturally because I was using a small amount of paint as I stroked. The paint kind of was removed there. It became a little more transparent, kind of like scraping off my brush. Perfect, that's great. That's exactly what you want. So again, I encourage you to wipe off your paint. That way you only have a little bit left and you'll get a nice kind of transparent streak as a result. So it really looks like it's shooting through the sky, leaving a little tail, but nothing too prominent. That's really all for the shooting star. So I'll give you a minute or two for that. And then we're gonna go back down here Comfy is key. I know comfy is my constant vibe, honestly. <laughs> Dress up, no comfy time. Sweats and sweatshirts. Sweats and hoodies all day. That's why winter is my favorite. It's all the comfy clothing. Dresses are comfy too. They're airy, but like nothing like bundling up in some nice, uh, nice sweatpants on a nice cold day. Winter is my absolute favorite for multiple reasons. One of many. Yeah, Carol, no, ask away. Ask away if you have any questions like that. I, it's just a matter of like, I don't know what the future holds. <laughs> That's the only reason I'm kind of like, ah, about my answer. It's, uh, yeah, number one due to COVID, I have no clue. But number two, like, I don't know where I'll be. It's just, I just know that I really like this so far and I'm going to stick with it for sure. And uh, yeah, the thought of like splitting up my time doing in-person events, not really liking that. I like, I like maybe fully concentrating on virtual, so... That's kind of my honest thoughts there. I'll let you know if that ever changes. I'm sure you guys will be the first to know if that ever changes, but uh, that's what I'm feeling. It's kind of nice just hosting from home too, to be honest. <laughs> and I think a lot of you guys like it too, just being at home rather than going out and stuff. So that's my opinion. Holly, my shooting star looks like a snowflake, LOL. Maybe it's, um, maybe your tips are a little bit wide. You can always shrink them up just by grabbing some blue, kind of knocking off a little bit of those tips there. Could be a cute little falling snowflake though. Same love, love, love winter. Yes, I don't know if I've talked about this before. I feel like I'm on the smaller end of things though when I say winter's my favorite, but there's always a few of you that chime in and go, yeah, yeah, me too. Okay, I'm just gonna go through the next step here. I know we're quickly approaching six, and I try my best to keep these within two hours. Honestly, guys, we're probably going a little past six. As per usual, my usual thing, I go a little late. Uh, but yeah, you can see, we don't have a lot left. I wanna do a small amount of detail on the rocks here. I found it was a nice detail to add some little highlights. And then it's really just the tent and campfire. Those take a little bit of time just with layering, but we'll get there pretty quickly here, okay? so. Let's, uh, again, let's do the little highlights on the rocks first. So just to give you a nice big close up, you can see just to add a little bit of an extra punch, I added some nice light blue gray, just kind of spliced in, gives a nice highlight to some of the tops of the rocks, okay? I would say this is a pretty optional step. It, it kind of amps up your painting just a little bit more, but you could easily skip it too if you don't want to do it. Mm hmm. Okay, so I'm just taking my small detail brush again with my very painty hand, uh, doing a nice super, super light blue gray. I'm a tree, have you been up this whole time, by the way? I saw that you were streaming when I woke up and I wanted to know, did you really go all night and into now? Did you nap at all? Please tell me you did. 
but I'm glad you're saying truth to my winter statements as well. So I'm just mixing everybody a super, super light blue-gray. So remember last time blue-gray was made with white, black, and blue? To make it lighter, you're just adding more white this time because it's a nice highlight. That is a dirty area. I'm going to go over here. There we go. So again, white, black, blue. I would say more white than usual. Kathy, virtual is so much better for the uh, for everybody. Winter is my favorite season too. Yes and yes. <laughs> Kathy, we're on the same page. Heather, 7.50 a.m. here. Yeah, I shouldn't say uh, 6 o'clock. I should say to the two-hour time frame where everyone is. <laughs> okay, so I've got this color. Again, it's a very nice light bluish gray. And I just really like to kind of put that into any... Any gaps here, see where there's a gap in between the black here, we have that blue gray showing through. I just do some small little waves of color, kind of looking almost at the tops of where those rocks are. And it just adds yet another blue gray, just adds a little bit of a highlight. Like I said, I think it just amps up the look of these rocks a little bit more. It's not the most necessary step, but I love it. And I'll let you know, I'm kind of sticking near the bottoms here because we're going to put a tent here. We're going to put a campfire here. So no use really wasting time doing that. Uh, putting all those blue gray streaks up there and kind of concentrating more in the middle, the bottom. You can see just using my small brush, doing small little curves, just kind of following along the spaces that I have already. I think you'll agree. It just amps up these rocks a little more. You can really see the highlights from a distance too. So. You did nap. Thank goodness, man. Thank goodness. Just woke up. I'll be out again here soon. <laughs> man, I applaud you. I couldn't believe it. I woke up and I just popped on Twitch. I was like, you still going? Those people got to stop subscribing. Like, congrats on your subscribers, but man, or the bits or whatever it was you were doing. I think it was subs. Increasing that time. Hilarious. The people just want to see you awake at all times. Oh, thank you for the cheer! Fortnite Big Bear, thanks so much! Boom. Or else. <laughs> or else what? That's the one thing you get, though. <laughs> Thanks again for the cheer! <laughs> A lot of cheers, huh? Thank you! So everyone, I'm just spending another minute or so putting this nice blue-gray, light blue-gray within my rocks. Again, not worrying too much about the very top. Alright, because we have our tent and campfire to go so it's really just the bottom see how they're nicely highlighted now that's what I'm going for close up the rocks of course here no problem thanks for the cheers Fortnite big bear thank you I appreciate it what is the name of this object that you put in your inks it's like a cake what? The object I put... Oh! This? This is Volcano Plate. Have you not seen Volcano Plate, Jurek? Is that good for the rocks? I hope so. Volcano Plate is a plate I've used for five years with the uh, same plate for all of my paints. It's all rock solid paint. Uh-huh. Right? And uh, yeah, just because I didn't want to keep using plates and throwing them out, so I used paint on paint on paint on paint. And one day it just kind of got out of control. It turned into a nice big, big old volcano. So it's volcano plate. It's very heavy, and it's just what I do. <laughs> uh, there's much better options, but I think it's fun to use volcano plate. Yeah. Yup. <laughs> okay. Got those rocks on? I hope, yeah. All right. So I'm going to go on to the tent here. I want to make sure we have enough time to do the base and then the campfire and then back to the tent. That's pretty much all we have left to do. We kind of go back and forth with the little elements now. 
Again, we're almost 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll probably be going a little bit after that, of course. Volcano plate, yes. Oh, you haven't, I'm shocked. Usually it makes a pretty big appearance in my streams, but yeah, it is kind of resting down here, so. <laughs> it's a fun little element here. Okay, so everybody, I'm gonna do our tent. So for the tent, what I did is I did a white base just so the color can really pop off. I chose to use orange on top of my white, which I'll do in a few more minutes. Uh, but you can choose really any color. I, I messed around with lots of different colors for my tent. Choose your favorite color, choose your actual tent color. I chose orange. Uh, but again, we start either way with a nice white base and then that way the color really pops off nicely. So I'm gonna use the nice medium round brush and I'm gonna use my white paint, of course. And I chose to do a very basic shape for the tent, kind of like a curve on the back here. Curves down on the top, curves down on the right, and we're just kind of making the nice three-dimensional triangular shape here. So I'll lead you through that just one at a time. So I start it right on the left-hand side here, right on the left, on the left-hand side. So I'm starting with that back edge there, it kind of curves down to the left. I'm gonna grab a different brush, that's the bad splitty brush. I just saw the plate. <laughs> yeah, it pops in and out. I can't believe you've seen it, but uh, that's all right. Sometimes it's very well hidden. So nice curved, again, line coming up like this. We do the top of the tent. I'm just gonna bring it a little higher. Top of the tent kind of curves down and over. That's a little low, let's try that again. Again, if you're looking straight onto your canvas, that's a lot easier than looking from the side like me. It's all for the sake of the tutorial though, so you can see what I'm doing. So it kind of bends down and up. This side will do the opposite of this side, so we curve kind of down and right this time. My tent's getting a little big, by the way, compared to my reference, but still enough room for my fire, so that's fine. For this bottom edge, I come down to the left just a little bit. See how it's angled just a little bit down like this? And then we're going to come back up. So we're creating kind of a corner right around here because this is going to be the opening of the tent. If it helps you to bring a little curved line down to show that shape, go for it. But that's the general shape right there. We're not worried about details like this quite yet. That's just for reference if you need help with creating the shape. Rocks and trees are always tricky. Heron, where's the bob shirt? Oh, <laughs> bob shirt's being washed. I wish I could wear the bob shirt every day, but after painting a few times in it, I need to wash it. So I'm wearing yet another painty piece of clothing. I have a whole drawer full of uh, paint clothing. Just filling this in, guys, whenever you're ready. So once you sketch it out, you just fill it in with white. Once again, try not to leave any big blobs of paint. You're just kind of smoothing it all out for a nice white base. Yeah, I have a whole drawer full at this point, Charlene, of, um, by the way, Twitch, I'm speaking to Facebook and Twitch, so if you're wondering why I'm responding to comments you don't see, that's why. We have two conversations going here. Uh, yeah, I have a whole drawer of just clothing that has either accidentally got paint on it or just older clothing that I don't really mind to get paint on. This dress is like seven years old. I'm like, okay, it's time. So uh, yeah, I, I just switch it in and out, but the bob shirt is top tier. If I'm able to wear the bob shirt, it gives me the most power to paint. So I really miss it. <laughs> I'll wash it soon. But yeah, Jarek, this thing is unbelievable. <laughs> I've done it before in streams where I uh, show off how heavy it is by slamming it on my table. I'm not gonna do that again right now, maybe after the tutorial, but the Facebook peeps have seen it enough. It's gonna hurt your ears too, so maybe later. <laughs> People just don't know how heavy it is, that they don't understand the, the weight of this thing. It's, it's quite hefty, quite hefty. Just giving one quick minute for the tent, guys, if you're still shaping that out. We're gonna go to our fire pit next. Grove, you should take a picture of the plate and make a demo. Plans, baby, you got my plans, right right there. I've written that down, volcano plate emote, yes. 
I was thinking of trying to digital art it, but you're right. I could just take a photo of it, right? I would love a volcano plate emote. So many emote ideas. Ruin saved. Lots to go. Okay, let's have a look at what we have left. Not much left, guys. Again, if you uh, if you need to go, I understand, but otherwise, not too much left. Uh, for the fire, you can see I do a little rock formation. Look, I have a little rock circle here. So I'm gonna do that first, because you can see it goes behind the fire. And then I'll teach you how to do some little logs and the flame itself. And then by that time, our, tr our, um, our tree, our tent should be dry enough to put some color on it and then some little grass. The grass, let me tell you, I only put that on there because I was like, I would not want to camp on rocks. I would not want to sleep on a big rocky surface. So I thought it was kind of me to put some grass here as if maybe it's a little, a little more comfy for the camper, you know? That was my thought there. All right, so let's go on to the fire. Again, a few steps for the fire, but all pretty straightforward. So here we go, using my tiny, tiny detail brush. I'm mixing together a nice gray. I would just call it a medium gray. So white and black mixed together, probably even amounts. And I just did literally kind of like an oval shape of rocks. You can put it wherever you want. I kind of put it near the tip here the tip of my rock, but I'm just doing small little oval shapes and I'm making them in an oval shape as well. So they're all kind of circling around. You can put them nice and tight together or a little further apart. I'm just going to go in front here to see what I'm doing. But just kind of using my brush, just kind of doing a couple brush strokes, kind of making very loose oval shapes. They don't need to be super detailed as you can see. Oh, mine is right on the edge of the water here. Ooh. That's good. It's better than being close to my tent, I guess. I don't want it too close to my tent. That would be dangerous. Mine's a little lopsided because it's right on the edge there. <laughs> it's like falling into the water. I could always add another rock or two to offset it. Maybe I'll extend that guy a bit. Extend that a bit. That's a little better. It looks a little more evened out. Whoa! Hit the paint with my elbow. Getting real painty today. Oh my goodness. I started with this and woof, woof. As an extra detail to your rocks, if you're someone who likes those extra details, you can add a little bit of a light gray along the tops just for a little highlight. I'll bring this closer so you can see, but I'm just using a lighter gray brushing along the tops of the rocks, like the top edge. And then that way it looks like they have a little bit of a highlight. Do you see that? Just a teeny bit there. It's just like a little bit of an extra, extra detail. Cause we're going to put a fire there. So I thought it would be fun to put a little kind of highlight little, uh, yeah, a little light area on top just to give it a little more depth, a little more dimension. And then we can go right into the fire itself. I assume you're all good with the rocks. It's a pretty quick step just to put those on there. So for the fire, um, I did do a couple logs. And then what I did is I added the fire on top. So if you want to do some logs with me, we can just make a quick brown color. And then we can put some nice fiery reds, oranges, etc., on top. So the brown is going to be made by mixing black, red, and yellow. I know I grabbed the yellow when I said red, but it's the same three colors, black, red, yellow. And that should make you a nice brown tone. We only need a little bit just for that small detail of the little logs in the fire. It's going to be a nice chocolatey brown. It should be anyway. If you mix red, yellow, a little bit of black, you'll get a nice brown. It looks pretty black there, but it is brown on my plate. And very simply, I just kind of went near the bottom of that oval there on the inside, of course, but near the bottom part. And I just did a couple little crisscrosses of brown lines, 
you know, like little logs, right? They're all kind of crisscrossing, all laying on top of one another. And I kept it near the bottom just so I had more room for the flames on top, right? Just giving a quick minute for those little logs. Again, there's really not a whole lot of detail to those. I know you can't see them a whole lot, but it's really just a little crisscross of a couple brown lines there. You can make them a little thicker, of course, because they're nice big logs. That light needs to catch that better. There we go. I love the fire step. The fire is so nice to do. It's so fun. Nice layering of nice hot colors. You can wash off your tiny brushes whenever you're ready if you're done with your logs. I'm just giving another half minute for those maybe still working. My laptop died, by the way, so I can't see the reactions, Facebook. So if you're doing any thumbs ups for reactions, I'm sorry, I can't see them anymore. <laughs> but I think I'm just going at a, a good pace here now for everybody. We're not too far out from the end here. fire what I did is I started on the outside and worked my way in you can kind of see how that worked I had the red on the outside I layered on some orange layered on some yellow right in the middle and that way I got a nice gradient of colors and lots of nice little layering of all the nice hot colors right so I'm gonna start with my red as I said look at me go rhyming away red on that teeny tiny brush and I'm kind of shaping out the whole flame for this part because the red goes on the outside. So I'm starting near the outside here, kind of just waving my brush as it comes up, doing a nice little tip at the top. It kind of comes out nice and wide on the other side. So just very like loose. I made my fire nice and tall. Again, kind of unsafe. Our campers aren't attending their fire, but it makes for a pretty fire anyway. And for the red specifically, I really pile it on because I find red paint to be kind of transparent, at least mine is. We were talking earlier about different brands and how they all act a little differently, but I've learned that my red paint is quite transparent on its own. So I'm really trying to pile, oh, again, a little tilty, trying to pile it on my brush and just lay it on nice and thick. I also add some texture to the painting. I love that texture. And again, trying to kind of going for that triangular shape, a very loose triangular shape, just wider at the bottom. You can have some little pieces of flame kind of coming off as if maybe little sparks are flying off a little, you know, just to break it up. But mainly sticking on the outsides for the red. Again, really blobbing it on. If you're worried about how much paint is going on there, I find it actually helps to really blob it on. So then when we add the oranges and yellows, they all kind of mix together and blob together. So I wouldn't be scared of that. I think it's a good thing. Again, for that texture as well. Lovely, lovely texture. Love it. Just grab a little more yellow to prep. When you've got some red on there, you can move right along to adding some orange. I'm just kind of working from the outside in. So I'm taking my small detail brush. I'm mixing together red and yellow. That makes a nice fiery orange color. And you're doing the same thing, kind of blobbing that on, stroking that on. I'm just going a little further in the middle now. Again, maybe stacking a little on top of your red, but mostly kind of working in. You can see it looks like it's getting hotter as we go further in. We got a nice orange there now, leaving a little gap in the middle because that's where the yellow is going to go. Again, you can kind of blob it on, stroke it on, just kind of placing it wherever you want. All of that works. Again, add a few little orange dots around it if you want that nice little flickering look with some little flames kind of on their own.
Okay, and then I've got the last little bit here, the nice yellow. So the yellow, rather than using just plain yellow, I did mix my yellow with a little bit of white. I found that helped really amp up the yellow a little bit more, made it brighter. And I was talking a little bit earlier about transparency. Yellow is another color of mine that is transparent, but I find if I add a little bit of white to it, really helps it stick on top. It's no longer transparent. So just add a little bit of white to your yellow if you need to, that'll help brighten it up. And you'll see, especially when you place it on top, kind of in the middle, see how bright that comes off. Just that little amount of white really makes a big difference. So once again, I'm just kind of dotting that on top. You can kind of mix it into the oranges and reds if you want, but I kind of try and keep it more in the middle. Oh, I love this step. Again, you can dot it maybe near the top a little bit, but it's mostly kind of in this bottom center where it's hottest, right? And again, hopefully you can see I've kind of dotted a little bit into the orange and allowed it to mix a little bit. As long as you're not losing all those individual colors, you can kind of mix and mold them the way you want. They kind of marble together. I love it. I love it. Yes. And yeah, even if there's a lot of paint piled on, it'll take a little longer to dry, but it will dry kind of raised like that. That's where that texture comes in. Love it. Yeah, Leah, there's a close up for you. So you can see pretty much now all the colors have kind of molded together. It's not like they're very distinct areas, but at the same time, a little bit. We have the red on the outside, oranges, and then yellows. Texture. I really want to get a sound bite. Did you watch Recess as a kid of a uh, TJ going tinder, but making it texture somehow. That's my plan. Texture. <laughs> but yeah, for real, this is, look at the light hit that. So nice. Love it. Love it. Love it. There's a nice close up, Leah. Hope that helped. I'll give a quick minute in case anyone's adding to their fire. You can add some little yellow flamey bits. You can see I just tapped up there. Again, the only steps we have left, guys, are the tent and the grass. I know we've gone quite a bit over two hours, but it's okay. Nice and flexible here. At least I am. I hope it's working for everybody. You're welcome, Leah. No problem. Again, if you're thinking of changing up your uh, tent color, think about that a little bit quicker because we're going to be doing the tent now. I'm doing orange personally. I played around with a green tent. I tried, I tried two different greens. It just wasn't working for me. So I ended up choosing orange. I was debating yellow at one point. Sharon, you can do a pink tent. <laughs> Lots of different options. So there's just a, oh, I don't want to smack that into my fire. So just to show you there. I just liked how the orange kind of offset everything. And then I had the green grass right beside it. I liked it. Kind of brought the fiery parts of the fire into the tent in a way. So what I wanted to point out is whatever color you choose, you're kind of choosing two colors, at least if you like kind of the look and shape of my tent. I chose my nice kind of bright regular color for this back side of the tent or the side of the tent, I should say. And then I made a lighter version for the front, kind of where the front flaps are. And then that way you can really see front versus side. And then of course the black kind of opening into the tent. Who knows what's in there? It's a nice little black triangle. So I'm gonna start with my regular orange. No complaints here. Awesome, Heather. Just enjoying your morning watch, yeah? Yeah, I'm gonna choose my nice bright color to begin with, and then whatever color you choose, that's fine. I would just make sure you can make it a little bit lighter for a nice light front, because that's where the light is hitting off as well, right? It also makes sense. Uh, real life scenarios with lighting, not the light hitting the front, so it's gonna be a little lighter. There you go. Okay. So you can use whatever brush you like. I would actually recommend the medium size brush though, even though it's a little bit bigger, it'll help really spread the paint out nice and even because the bristles are longer. So that's why I'm going to use this one rather than the tiny um, detail brush. So sticking with my reference, I'm going to stick with my nice bright orange. So orange, if you need a reminder, is made by mixing yellow and red. And just to show you kind of the shape here, I'm just using the orange to show, re-show that edge there. So it's really just kind of a curved line that comes down from that right hand tip down to that corner we made earlier, right? So you're kind of 
carving out the front versus the side. Now I can put on this nice orange, and again, that's why we did that white base in case I didn't explain it before. It's because now we have a nice clean area to put our color, and you can see how bright it comes off as a result. This way you could use things like yellow or a nice light blue or whatever you want, and it'll come out nice and clean on top of your dark rocks, which we had there before. So even though it was a little time consuming to do that first white layer rather than going straight into color, it's totally worth it in my opinion. You get a nice bright color as a result. And consistent color too, you're not worried about going on top of black lines versus the gray lines versus the pink uh, lake there. This gives you a nice even base for a nice even color. You can see it just goes on nice and smooth now. Your white should be completely dry by the way. If it's not, maybe give it an extra minute or two, but mine was bone dry when I just went on it now. Ooh, see how bright that is, yeah. It's a little bit darker orange than my original it looks like, but I like it. Oh yeah, a lot darker. I like it still. So this would have just used more yellow in case anyone's wondering. Okay, and then as I said, you just want to use a slightly lighter version of your color for the front flap here. So for me, I'm going to use a little bit of white and mix it into my orange just to make it a little more of like a creamy orange color. You could use more yellow as well, that would work as well. If anyone has questions about their color, let me know in terms of lightening it, but generally, generally if you add white to it, it's going to turn lighter. There's alterations like green, you could add yellow to make it lighter, orange adding yellow. Purple, you can add more like red to make it a different tone, but generally adding white is safe in order to make a lighter version. So what you're kind of doing is you're kind of like framing this triangle, so you're doing a nice band of light orange coming down on the left, nice band coming down on the right, maybe making it a little wider at the bottoms here. But it's like you're just kind of outlining those two edges so it looks like kind of the little flaps of the tent are maybe open. And again, I'm choosing to do that so I can have like a black triangle in the middle as if the tent is open. You could kind of close up the tent just by using your light color all in that front area. That's really up to you. Great way to start the day. It is! I'm kind of jealous that you get to tune it like 7.30 as you're starting. Heather, it must be nice and relaxing just to kind of watch as you're, as you said, making your coffee and all that. No reason I can't turn on some Bob Ross though in the morning. That's how I used to start every morning as a kid. That's where I learned to paint was Bob and I would watch him every morning before school. So I, kinda, I know the feeling. It's a nice feeling to start off with a little bit of art instruction. It's cool. Hey Joe, nice to see you. Woo, painting. Water looks so cool. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm a fan of the water and the rocks. I love the rocks in this one personally. All right, so the last step of the tent here and just grabbing some black. I'm using my nice detail brush now, of course, because we're working in a very small area. And I'm literally just filling in that last little gap that we left here. So yeah, even if you kind of messed up with your light orange or lighter version of your color, you can easily use the black to carve out your opening again. So don't worry too much if that happened to you. The black goes on top of anything very easily, so just use that to carve out whatever you need to. I might want to raise mine a little higher up, for example, just to bring the tip up higher. There we go. So it's nice and open. My tent is choosing to be open. The people are watching their fire, so they are being safe. They're having a look at their fire. It's not completely unattended, hopefully. Yes, Roxo, that was very cool. Thank you, thanks, Joe. Yeah, I was just especially pretty happy with the rocks just because I kind of came up with that design myself. I was very inspired by the Muskoka kind of cottage country rocks and I thought it looked pretty sweet. The nice kind of like mosaic look, you know? Different for me. All right, so that's the tent, everybody. I'll give another half minute in case you're cleaning that up, but I just have one last step for you. And again, kind of optional. I mean, my theory with this step, I think I said it before, but I put this tent on the rocks and I was like, dang, 
as a seasoned camper, I know I would not want to put my tent there. That seems like awful sleeping conditions. <laughs> so I felt bad for the campers and I was like, maybe what I'll do is I'll put some grass there and then at least maybe it looks like it's kind of cushioned there. Maybe it's just a little grass patch in and amongst the rocks, a little more cushioning, you know? So just my thought with the campers, I didn't want to leave them on solid rock sleeping. I figured that would be a little uncomfortable. So if you don't like the look of the grass, you definitely don't need to add it. I just thought it made sense for uh, comfy reasons. All right, so I'm gonna whip that out now just cause I'm looking at the time and yeah, we went quite over the two hour usual time frame. I obviously don't have like a strict time frame, but I try and keep it close to two hours. I know that's what you guys like too. So I'm just gonna throw in the grass here. Very easy quick step for the last bit here. So I'm just using my teeny tiny brush, which I washed off, and I'm mixing green, which is yellow and blue together. Just any like regular grass green. We are making grass, so grass green is good. And very easy, all I do is I use the tip of the brush, do some flicking. So I'm flicking upwards. I choose to go from bottom to top, flicking up, 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 grabbing more paint, flicking again. If you have some fresh paint on your brush, like using a fair amount, you can even flick right on top of the uh, tent, even though you just laid down some color. I'm going to give you a close up so you can see. You can see that green is going right on top of the orange. So if you want a little bit more layering, like in terms of the grass being in front of the tent on top, certainly you could try that out. You might want to avoid the black. That might be a little bit too fresh. But yeah, put some grass around there if you want. Just flicking it a bunch, trying to bunch it all up. Again, thinking of our campers here, trying to give them a little bit of a comfy spot. And I just kind of sprinkle the grass coming down a little bit so I don't cover the whole rock face with grass. I just kind of make it a little thicker by the tent and then I kind of sprinkle it down a little further, just more individual blades. I'm not worried about bunching them up quite as much. But again, that's all, that's all up to you. That was really just my thought process of feeling bad for the campers and that's really the only reason I added grass. It's really the only reason it's there, otherwise it's a nice little rock face on its own, so. Just as another close up, you can see what I did there. So I like to especially put, yeah, you can see lots right around the tent and then I just kind of sprinkle it down so it's all kind of disappearing as it gets further down. And that is the end of the tutorial. Wow! Just gonna triple check that I didn't forget anything. Compare, contrast. Compare, contrast. Looks pretty good to me. Yeah! Sherry, thanks, really loved it. Bonnie, we figured you Canadians were tougher campers than us Americans. <laughs> That's not the case at all. <laughs> That's great that you thought that though. I'm just a hardcore camper here. <laughs> That's hilarious, Bonnie. No, I really thought it, I just, I wanted the camping scene. I was like, but I like the rocks. I don't want to cover those up too much. So that was my only thought process. I was like, I know I wouldn't want to camp there. Let's say I had a nice blow up mattress, but usually I don't bring that along with me. So <laughs> that's hilarious. Thank you, Bonnie, for that comment. <laughs> We're all in the same boat. Nobody wants to uh, sleep on a hard rock surface, I think. I think. Show of hands if you want to, but I don't think so. <laughs> Oh, man. Ooh, afternoon tea, Joe. I can freaking relate. Yes, I'm in like late evening tea now. Nice painting once again. Thank you, Grok. Yay for grass bed. Yeah, I agree, Joe. You're amazing. Thank you, Diane. You're amazing. So guys, if you're all done, I always say the last step is to sign your painting. It really solidifies the painting being done. So do some little initials in the bottom corner, if you please, or on the back. I know some of you like to do that. There are mine. My messy initials as usual. But yeah, thank you guys for coming. Ooh, lots of comments coming in. So again, on Twitch, uh, I'm also on Facebook. So that's why I'm talking to people you might not see and vice versa. Uh, here, thank you so much for the tutorial. This is my first time and I really enjoy it. I'm glad you enjoyed here. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. I'm glad you enjoyed. Uh, so before anyone signs off, just know if you want to share your painting, which I hope you do, if you want to share a nice photo of your finished painting, head back to that Facebook event where you probably initially found me. 
Um, at least those on Facebook, you're probably RSVPing to a Facebook event to uh, view this tutorial. I'm going to open up posting to that uh, page very, very soon after this tutorial is done and it'll give you the ability to post your photos so everyone is welcome to share their photos with one another. It's always very nice and uplifting to see everybody's beautiful paintings. Everyone is very nice about their compliments and I guarantee if you're feeling a little insecure about something, if maybe like, ah, oh, I don't really like my tent, someone's going to point out your tent and say, I love that tent. It's the favorite tent of all the tents. So I really encourage you to do it. Um, yeah, post your photo, share, and even if you just want to check out everyone else's paintings, it's a good place to go. So that Facebook event page, again, I'll open up posting just after I'm done here. Uh, if you're looking for another tutorial, I'll be posting one incredibly soon. It's going to be for this Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Again, I'll show you the painting. It is this da, 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 Eiffel Tower Paris painting. Woohoo! So I'll be teaching this one step by step Friday, 8 p.m. So you can mark your calendars already, but otherwise I'll make a Facebook event so that you can easily RSVP. Okay, that'll be Friday at 8. Um, this tutorial will be available on YouTube after, so for those tuning in or just watching, if you want to rewatch or try with your own paints, youtube.com slash Paints is where you want to go. And I think that's all. If anyone's wondering about tips today, thank you again for those who want to support me. Um, Facebook, on that description, I linked you to an e-transfer email and a PayPal link. Tips are never expected or always just extra and appreciated, but I always say it. What's extra special in me is everyone coming and painting with me live. So thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's all there if you want it, but thank you guys so much. Lots of thank yous in the chat. Again, everyone's so kind. Heather, you're welcome. Enjoy the rest of your day, Heather. Uh, Vicki LOL, Mary, you're welcome. Diane, you're welcome. Leah, you're welcome. Great first experience. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. A lot of newbies today. I'm glad you guys are finding me one way or another. So thanks so much for coming. You're welcome, Vicki. Enjoy today. You too, Carol. Kathy, thank you so much, Erin. This was fantastic. See you Friday for the Eiffel Tower. I'll see you there. Thanks, Kathy. Charlene, once again, will PM you. Fun as always. Of course, Charlene. Yeah, I'll be PMing you after this, probably. Whenever I get offline for like an hour, I'll work on my uh, little sketch and then send it over. Yeah, so I'll hang out on Facebook for another minute or two if there's any questions. It seems like you're all good to go, though. As usual, if you have any last minute questions or need help with anything, I'm happy to help you. So just let me know if anything was causing you trouble or you need to clarify anything. Happy to go through it. <laughs> Join my half completed Discord. Yes. <laughs> <I'm broke. laughs> Earl Grey is top tier. Joe, I agree. Tension team. Oh, nice. Yeah. I think I'm, yeah, I have Irish breakfast today with my Irish heritage. I always have my Irish breakfast tea. It's like English breakfast. I think it's like the same thing. <laughs> I don't know what difference it is. It's a strong black tea. That's all I know. That's what I like. Sharon, you're very welcome. I'll see you around, I'm sure. But yeah, I'm, I'm very much into the black teas. Cream of Earl Grey actually is like, if I want to get real specific, it's one of my favorites. David's tea is cream of Earl Grey. Here I go with my tea ranting again. Before we end, can we have a close-up? Of course, Trisha. Yeah. Do you want a close? I'll, I'll give you two close-ups. I'll give you this one. So this is the one I created live with you today. So it's going to be a little different from the original. I'm trying to get the lighting right for you. I'm trying to show off the whole thing. So I noticed in this one, my tent was a little bit darker orange. My fire placement was right near the water today. <laughs> and what else did I notice? Maybe the crescent moon was a little different. Anyway as close as I can get there and then I'll give you a close-up of the original okay and the original is in that Facebook event uh, banner if you need a little close-up there too and there's the original so things are a little brighter I would say maybe the campfire is a little brighter maybe the rocks as well things are cleaner like the moon because I was looking straight at my canvas rather than from the side hope that's understandable but there you go da -da -da. You're welcome, Trisha. First time for you as well. Wow. How'd you all find me? <laughs> Let me know. Was this recommended to you on Facebook? Did a friend send you here? I'm actually really curious because I would love to uh, continue to grow this page and uh, show it to as many people as possible. So let me know if you have any tips for how you just naturally came across me. 
Tracy, this is my first time painting with you. Really enjoyed it. Thank you very much. You're amazing and easy to follow. Thank you very much, Tracy. That means a lot. Once again, a first again, I'm serious. If you guys have any tips for how you found me, just so I know how to find more people, love to know. Facebook is an ever-changing platform, which I can't keep up with, so... Any reasoning to their algorithms would be top-notch. Addison Aaron, keep up the good work. Thank you. Painting has really helped me through this time. I've been struggling with depression. You're painting really... You're painting real... You're painting lives... Oh, lives have really helped. Thank you, Addison. Thanks for sharing. I really appreciate it. I know painting can do a lot for a lot of people, and it does for me, too, and that's why I'm doing it, too. I know everyone's all like... You're selfless, but like it really helps me too to be able to paint and teach everybody. So trust me when I say it, uh, it really helps me too. And I'm just, I'm really glad it can help you as well. So uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in, Alice Addison. I hope to see you around again. I think you were kind of new today too, yeah? I, I, I know you, but you're new here. <laughs> Peggy, thank you from Thunder Bay, Ontario. Enjoy it very much. Summer sky. All right, I'll keep it in mind. You're very welcome, though, Peggy. Trisha on Facebook. Yeah. If you go to the Facebook event page, you got it. Oh, found you on... Oh, I see. Found you on Facebook. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess... Um, I know this is very specific, but... <laughs> how'd you find me on Facebook? Was it just on your timeline? Was it a friend liked the page and then Facebook, like, pushed it towards you? Anyway... Those are specific questions. I know they're kind of boring questions, but just for the sake of being able to find as many people as possible who want to join in on these things, because the more people, the more fun it is, honestly. And I can see we're growing every day. We had like, I think 80 people tuning in on Facebook, plus another 20 on Twitch. So that was very exciting. Joe, I agree. That's It was a happy accident, honestly, thinking of Bob, to put it right there, because I was like, it is quite safe. <laughs> if it happens to fall in the water, it's all good. <laughs> Again, I was concerned about safety. My campers aren't really watching the fire right now. Carol, you're very welcome. Again, I'm glad you were able to tune in. I know you said you might not be able to, but I'm glad you had the time today. Thanks for coming. Vicky, it popped up because I searched painting and creative ways to... Oh, thank you! Okay, great. That's very good to know. Creative ways to keep happy in my life. Excellent, Vicky. Okay. Yeah, like, like using tags and stuff on Facebook. I'm trying to get specific things I can be saying or like doing in my post. Thank you. That's very, very helpful. Searching, painting, and creative ways. Okay, yeah, gotcha. All right, Facebook, I'm gonna leave again one more minute. I said that five minutes ago, but I'll do it again. Twitch, I don't know if I'm gonna be hanging out much longer. I'm pretty tired, I've been on since 11. It's been a good seven and a half now, <laughs> seven and a half hours, but stick around. We're gonna, gonna see if we can raid somebody. Kim, thanks so much, Kim and Lily from Cambridge. You're welcome, Kim and Lily. Bonnie, it showed up randomly, now I share with friends. Excellent, thank you. Yep, sometimes it's just random. <laughs> sometimes it just happens to be there, and that's totally fine. <laughs> Appreciate it, Bonnie. Okay, I think we're all set. So Facebook, I'm gonna end off your stream. So this video is available right after this is done. You can go right back to Facebook and view it. Otherwise, I'll do my best to stick it up on YouTube as soon as possible after with all the nice intro and editing and all that editing. Okay, all right. Thanks for coming again uh, for the tutorial. I'll see you at the next one. Bye.